This is a little presentation uh, Atticus and I gave at Bayou Land Young Farmers meeting Monday night on uh, fertilization. And this is kind of the tail end of it. But, you know, technology's come a long way. This The picture on the left is actually my, my dad's 1940s model B tractor. You can see the triple 13 in the old Kentwood jug and down into the fertilizer pick right in the middle. And then come over on the right, and this is a big stubble splitter rig that Jim Domain uses. And uh, he started out with a, a really big coulter and then went to these smaller yetter coulters, but I'll, I'll get into more of that later. I've got some videos. Hopefully I'll be able to play them. But the the this all started with, I guess, the first person who started playing with it on our end was Taylor Blanchett. He's got a lot, a lot of heavy land in that Lauraville area. And his idea was to be able to get in there early with some balloon tires. And, uh, you know, the top of the row always dries out faster than the than the fur. So the idea was to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to get in there earlier and get his, his fertilizer down and get, get the cane crop up and going. So we had four basic treatments in this test. We uh, split the stubble, uh, which is, you know, you'll see the coulter running right down the middle of the stubble. And then coulter's 18 inches apart, which uh, in my experience is a, a good bit narrower than where you would normally run a two coulter rig. Uh, normally they're out about 24 inches. And then conventional, uh, where we off board put the fertilizer in the in the off bar cut and then wrapped it back up. And then the fourth one was kind of a wild card. It, it kind of gave me a panic attack when I saw it, but we actually surface applied the, uh, the fertilizer. And uh, I was really surprised that, that there weren't any uh, yield losses from that, but we had ideal conditions last year. So that, 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 uh, that, uh, that, that probably that, contributed that probably to the, the lack of differences. Lack. So like I said, this, this big stubble splitter rig that the domains use that you can see the, the knife cut right in the middle of the stubble. Um, it's uh, works really well. I, I really like this setup. When when they started this, they were pulling a bubble rig uh, with the fertilizer in it behind that, the applicator. And they went from that to tanks on the tractor, just trying to have one less uh, wheeled piece of equipment in the field. Some of the concerns we had, uh, I had initially was was cut and stubble, and you can see in the picture on the left where they, they definitely disrupted some of these young plants. And on the right, they, you can see the leaves were just trimmed. And it's something the grower asked me after the meeting Monday night. He said, how late can you do this? And I said, yeah, that, that's a really good point. The later you get, the more damage you're going to have once this cane starts making a stalk. Uh, so that's something that definitely needs to be considered in this point in the game. Uh, but these, this test last year was put out early, and uh, the, the cane fully recovered from any damage uh, that was incurred due to the coulters in the middle. Uh, and like the guy who run that, ran the applicator last year told me, he said, just don't look at it for a week or two. <laughs> so this is a video. You can see this, this coulter rig in the middle, and I have a couple videos I'll play. And this is so the second video I showed was um, that was the original the Louvier Coulters is a, a 24 inch Coulter. Uh, the, the first video was the Yetter Coulters. It's a little bit smaller to 20 inch Coulter. Uh, there's a difference of opinion on, you know, if you put in fertilizer deep enough or, you know, or too deep, maybe. Um, but there's a couple more pictures here, just the, the fertilizer cuts. And on the right, uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a big chunk of soil at the drain that, that was knocked out of place by the coulter. So there, there may be some concerns as that. And I was really, really surprised, behind, especially behind the, yet, the yetter coulter. It's, it's, I, they call it a fluted coulter. It's kind of wavy. And that soil tends to crumble, and, and it really does fall right back in the, in the groove behind the fertilizer. So why would we even consider not cultivating? Obviously, this is something Atticus and I noticed last summer walking cane in, in these irrigated fields in some of the new areas, the cane production. I didn't realize how far the roots extended out into the middle, but we could actually hear the roots crunching under our boots as we were walking the fields. 
Uh, so especially conditions being late, uh, it's certainly something to be considered to not prune what roots are there. For the second treatment, we went with two coulters 18 inches apart. Um, and like I said, that's a, it's a good bit narrower than what uh, I would consider conventional. But you know, I, I really like this treatment as well because he's putting the, the fertilizer right where he needs it. Uh, one disadvantage with this and within a, a conventional approach that you avoid with splitting the stubble is you put your fertilizer in the middle of the row like that and you're able, if you have weed problems or if you come in and put your fertilizer when the ground conditions are a little damp, you can come back and off bar whether you, you're fixing some ruts or, or whether you made a little uh, a little rut when you put the fertilizer down, you can come back and fix that if your fertilizer is in the top of the row as opposed to if it's in the hip of the row. And conventional, like I said, we off board, put the fertilizer in the trench and then wrapped it back up. And then the fourth uh, fourth treatment, like I said, it, I was really surprised. I wasn't real happy with this application because like I said, it's on top of the row. Um, there was an addition last year of a product they call Slow In. It's a slow release component to the fertilizer blend. Uh, that may have had something to do with the, the fact that we didn't see any any differences, but uh, I really think it had more to do with ideal conditions. We didn't have any great big heavy, heavy rainfalls following this this application, uh, but we had adequate rain, and so they incorporated the fertilizer, you know, with rainfall, and it was able to stay in position. So, like I said, there there were no significant significant differences in uh, in tonnage, tons per acre, and uh, tons. Uh, pounds of sugar per ton or in pounds of sugar per acre. Um, these were large plots. These were five row plots for replications across the field. And we had, uh, we treated the truck weights as a replication within within those five rows. And uh, and we just used core data um, for, the, for the sugar data, so. But uh, with that, I, I can entertain any questions or, or hear any comments.